My name is Kenny Boone. I am a visual artist. Mm, have been for the past 20 years and probably 10 on top of that one. 20 years professionally. Well, 20 years aiming to be a professional. <laughs> and here it is 22 years later. More recently, in the last one or two years, this live painting aspect of being an artist has sort of surfaced. So yeah, painting with real musicians, real sound, real audience. Um, you're forced to be very spontaneous. You're forced to work fast. You're forced to, to have a lot of nerve. You're forced to forget about failing because <laughs> if you do, you'd never actually go through with the, the idea of even standing in front of an audience or being next to a band and performing. You become, it's a performance more than anything. You know, I don't get to see that when I'm doing it, but I'm told that, you know, from the video and just from people who watch, it does become a live performance, you know, whether it's movement, you know, whether it's painting with my credit cards, which basically is just a tool to move paint around to do it really fast. So to use a brush seems to slow me down. So that if I was to load up a brush, I tend to want to paint slow. Whereas if I'm using my hand or a credit card, you know, you're being spontaneous. It's all based on probably 90 minutes of time. I know that these large paintings in my studio, if I was to attack them, would possibly take a couple of days to do. I mean, the ry rhythm of the music is driving me to move with the music. Um, you know yourself from just watching me paint that if the band is playing fast, I'm painting fast. It's just an easier way to, uh, to paint more, more beyond what I've painted, basically. You know, you know, beyond traditional landscape painting, you know, beyond drawing, beyond life drawing, all that stuff. It's just basically for my satisfaction more than anything. It's not for the money so far. <laughs> Too much pressure, no, the pressure will come at about nine o'clock. And actually, I don't think it's gonna be pressure. Feeling good. Yeah, it's basically me painting live. Buck and Kent rocking on. I've known Kenny uh, for a long time and yeah, I've seen him doing his painting things and he's painted on stage with us before and it's always, it's always like a weird, oh, what's going on? Hey, hey guys, what are you playing tonight? I don't know, what are you painting tonight kind of thing, <laughs> And we all mill around and do our things and plug in our gear and he sets up his paints and stuff like that and we all try and make space for each other. There wasn't a lot of, for the Sky Cabin uh, gig, there wasn't a lot of space there because we were, what, like 30 feet up above the ground. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it was, it was tight. But uh, yeah, it's a great experience. It, it's, it's really neat bringing two different art forms together. A lot of people say that music can be seen in color and all this stuff, and painting is an expression like a song. You know, each picture is like a song. So there's a lot of crossover with artistic theories, I guess. I said, I should just start a band. And it was like, the way we put it, would you like to play a concert band instrument from scratch? Or have your kids left their instrument in the closet? Or have you not touched your instrument in 25 years? That kind of thing. Now the product doesn't reflect the instruments at all, um, visually, like you just don't see an instrument in it. But we see our story, and I, probably another reason why I like Kenny, because of stories that he creates from his paintings, whether it's just on the spot or something that is from the past or whatever. And we have a story, and Second Wind has a story, and, and once again, Kenny's connected to the people that are involved in this story, and, and I'm so happy for Kenny because, um, you know, I want to see him do well and live here in Cape Breton and prosper. I'd be happy to stay in Cape Breton and play 
square dances and uh, Kaylee's and fundraisers my whole life. Um, unfortunately, it's hard to make a really good living that way. So with that, I hope Sprag Session can uh, keep fans both at home and abroad and make a routine of going to visit them all. I think one of the biggest surprises is, uh, that folks might get is that they get to watch uh, another artist become a part of the band for the duration of their set. Kenny slides in as the next member that uh, adds just as much energy as a, as a, a side musician would uh, in a collaboration with a band. He adds just as much, uh, as much color and movement and visually cannot, uh, uh, you know, he, he, he gives everyone the chance to, uh, to uh, how, how would I say this? I, I'm getting a little tied up here, but Kenny has a way of bringing the music to life would be the best way I could describe it. And getting to watch him while you play is just as inspiring in turn for the musicians. So yeah, cameras are nothing. They, they, they become non-existent, same as the audience. The audience doesn't exist when I'm painting. It's just me, the canvas, and the boys or women in the band. And that's kind of the way it has to be. Is there, again, the amount of time on stage is usually limited to 90 minutes max, 60 minutes minimum. And that's not a lot, not a lot of time to create a large canvas. Yeah. And for the most part, these canvases come off stage and they're not touched. The earlier pieces were worked on a little bit in the studio, but the later pieces, you know, that's when I really started taking pride when the brush went down. It was finished and I would take it home, sign my name, and then I knew it was officially finished. You know. And then it was weeks later that I realized the true value of these works where they would, it is like some little painting elves came in later on and touched up here and there. Because then you start seeing what you're not, re you can't recall what you did on stage. It's later that when your head is clear of the whole event, you know, clear of the anxiety, the fear, the travel part, you know, the money part, all of it, when all that's gone, the painting presents itself. And that's when I'm, that's when I'm ready to jump in and do another one. You know, you know, I have faith in myself as an artist. I think that's the one big thing that allows me to get through each and every show. You know. And it's been it's been a long road. It's been two years, I believe, four months approximately, to create this full series of paintings. You know. Whether I keep going, that's another question. I certainly would like to keep painting, not under the same pressure of trying to create 20 works, but always having that opportunity to paint live on stage. You know. it, forces me to think outside my own sort of comfort zone. I mean, there is the studio that I'm so used to painting in. You know, I've got control of my music. I've got control of my mood in some ways. And energy, everything is sort of in front of me. But on stage, you're at the mercy of, again, that 90 minutes of time and the materials on hand and the canvas in front of you. It's, there's so many limitations. But what happens on stage would never happen in my studio. So that's the sort of beautiful part. I mean, I know that. So that's the part that's most exciting. I just think it's it's a good thing for anybody to do any kind of project, really. You know, anybody who's getting excited about art or excited about music or excited about poetry or I, I don't even know what people are into. <laughs> people are into a lot of stuff, so I think they should express themselves and hopefully they'll be able to uh, let other people learn from their gift and you know, take something to their own hearts from this art and expression. And uh, I think that's the way to do it. Whatever your artistic out outlet is, find that niche, find it is what makes your, um, your music or art or dance special and run with it. Um, I think Stepping on the stage is fueled by my passion for being an artist. It truly is. There's a passion that's, again, sort of maybe built within. Maybe I was born with this passion to be an artist. I'm not quite sure. I mean, it was obvious to me at an early age, whether I was 10 or 11, that I was going to start painting. Because I mean, as a kid, you know, I was the guy who painted my own helmet, my motorcycle, my neighbor's motorcycle, which, again, slowly snowballed into painting motorcycles from all over the place 
all over maritime provinces. You know. And so again, even then, I'm building my sort of visual skills and playing with color and playing with material. So yeah, as time progressed and I had more opportunity to paint live, that's when my artists became more confident. They became more used to the materials on hand. I knew what the paint was going to do. I started messing with fluid acrylics, not just sort of buttery acrylics, mixing them up. So, you know, I mean, to start a painting, I certainly like using very fluid paint. So when I, you know, smash the painting or the canvas with water and just throw color at it, there's an, an immediate motion that happens. And that just, I mean, I do the same thing in my studio with watercolor where I wet the paper, color explodes and it gets me moving. And so it's kind of like first gear and you just, you know, I think my mind has more than six gears and I just rev it and rev it and rev it and just keep it going and going and going. And, and again, as you've witnessed, these things just happen and, and it's, there's no hesitation, there's no time. I mean, you could take the time to do nothing and think about it, but when the music's playing, it's time to work and that's when you work and there's no, you know, I don't sense any hesitation on stage. I'm always you know, thinking, you know, spontaneously, it's, it has to happen that way. And there's no one else going to answer my questions either. All those questions that are being sort of asked in that moment, you know, I need an answer in that moment. You know, yeah, you know, I've said before, it doesn't mean I'm making the right decision in that moment, but if it's messed up, then I just somehow figure out how to fix it. And, and in my mind, it's never really messed up. I might make a decision that reflects on the downfall of the painting, but I know if I go back to it, it'll work out. So again, it goes back to that confidence of having that confidence. And, and the confidence comes from 20 years of painting. It's not that one night that Mingo would allow me on stage with him. It was 20 years prior to that of you know, being a traditional landscape painter, you know, doing life drawing for years, just applying myself creatively almost every day in every aspect of my life, not just painting. It's you know, gardening. My own studio is custom built to suit my needs and most of the furniture, the walls were built by myself, my father and my brothers, we all sort of chipped in. So, and it's that aspect of me, the sort of gene that my father has of being creative, being inventive. I know I have that. My brothers have the same thing. You know, they both work construction and every day they're building you know, fancy bulkheads, you know, odd buildings. You know, my youngest brother deals with the automotive airline and marine trade where he repairs. Uh, carpet, uh, vinyl, leather, and he's always dealing with color. So in some sense, you know, he's dealing with that same sort of gene that we were all gifted. So yeah, I certainly thank my father inside many times. I need to thank him in person, but for now I thank him inside. Yeah, and so you know, that's part of my strength. You know. Certainly didn't come from high school. High school offered me nothing other than you know, maybe manual training, which was the one. There was one high school teacher in manual training who recognized that you know, I was good at woodworking. And so that was, again, being creative, using your head, using your hand, using tools. So I do praise him. The rest of it I, I want to forget about because he really you know, scolded me for daydreaming, which was, I can remember staring out the window one day and thinking about making stuff, thinking about this telephone pole that I was staring at and who put it there and who designed the light. And I was quickly scolded. And shortly after, they actually stuck me in a a room with people who were sort of troubled, and I certainly wasn't troubled. I was just being who I was, and it wasn't recognized. And I look back and I think, come on, there's so many people, you know, they have a hidden talent or a talent that's undeveloped, and they just don't get a chance to use it. You know? Whereas myself, again, growing up around my brothers and my father, it was just a constant making things from nothing, from garbage sometimes. I mean, still till this day, I'm not a garbage collector, but I certainly, if I need something, I'll make it try to make it before I actually go out and buy it. So I've learned over time just to trust my own sort of intuition and allow, again, that manifestation thing to sort of happen. And 
It's like there is some higher power and I'm hooked up to strings and it's sort of walking me through most days. the aspects of my life that keep me anchored, like my garden, basically. I mean, that's me being creative with dirt and trees and plants. And I know that keeps me sort of level-headed. There will always be that effort to keep myself, again, keep myself uh, clear-minded, clear if that is even a word, just to keep myself going, not add a ton of pressure into my life, because the more things I start to do, whether it's endless projects, I do find that I can overload my head and my artist basically gets shuffled under the rug. So I'm always aware of protecting my, my artist. Because I mean, there is an artist inside me. It's, I mean, there's a man, there's an artist, and the artist needs to be looked after. And I've learned how to uh, basically accommodate my man in order to be an artist. So, and that's taken a long time. And that the rules change all the time. Well, I mean, you do stuff like you're saying, where you work with people and uh, you, know, you try and get stuff on the go you know, outside of your own personal realm so that you can, you know, get a little bit of money into your bank account so that you can pay your bills and buy your food and do your stuff, right? Um, but always in the back of your head, you gotta be working towards what you want. And I mean, that might sound selfish, but I mean, y you are yourself. You gotta work towards what you want in some respect, being compassionate to others or whatever, like I'm not saying that, but you have to do whatever you have to do to get your art out there in the way that you want it. It's choices we make. <laughs> it's fair. It's the way it goes. I don't have a monopoly on what I do. I just happen to make. I mean, I do without. I mean, most people would not. Most people would rather drive a new car than drive an old car like I drive. But my new, my old car suits me fine. It works fine because I look after it. So yeah, there's, I mean, there's a price to pay to have the freedom that I have. I know that. You know, there's days where I wonder if you know, what I've given up is worth worth it, but in the end, I think it is. And I think, I think I'm 52 years old right now, I'm not even quite sure anymore, but I don't live like a 52 year old person. You know, I think I'm, I, I don't live by a number, I just sort of, again, I live every day. And hopefully wake up every day feeling excited about whatever it is this day is going to present to me. You know, whether it's, you know, having in a, a relationship that's exciting and fun, whether it's having friends, whether it's having family around me, you know, good friends, always having music around me, you know, just having time to rest, having time to walk, it's all, it's all important. It's not about stressing out, even though I'm sure I have my stresses, I, my life for the most part is kind of stress-free. This is home, I like this pace. I want a farm, my wife has a horse. Like, I want to live in the country in Cape Breton and be able to still have my family food and fun taken care of. We live in a very exciting time for Cape Breton art. Uh, the Cape Breton Center for Craft and Design is doing amazing things for artists. People are very interested in what is going on in Cape Breton. Some know about it and some don't, but uh, I think it's only a matter of time before we see this creative community in Cape Breton grow to be very sustainable. For, for these artists that are here in Sydney uh, doing this and then collaborating amongst the, uh, the different um, you know, genres of music and art and dance, and, all that and to be supporting each other it becomes like a little family you know if you're into music figure out how to play weird chords and scales have fun if you paint throw color on the canvas and and do what you want be creative be a Picasso be a da Vinci be whoever be yourself interpret whatever life throws at you into your own art. I mean, there's not a day that I'm not walking the shoreline of Cape Breton and being you know, thrilled by what I'm seeing. And so, yeah, there, there is no shortage. I think I could you know, live out my life as an artist and always have something to paint. Just don't stop doing what you're doing. Obsess over your 
Obsess over your craft. Obsess over what you're doing. Put as much time as humanly possible into it before ruining the rest of your life. <laughs> Which will eventually cross over and, and happen at some point. Stay inspired. Be happy. Make mistakes. <laughs>